Hello from the Blue Eye Firing Wings and welcome back again. This time I'm going to be interfering with a bell fearless fire. Now, I actually bought this second hand off the internet for my five year old daughter. So she can go to her first nerf battle at Manchester Nerfers in two days time. And unfortunately, dead on arrival. Batteries in it, no life. Batteries are in a voltage. When I put the multimeter into here on a continuity check, and I rev the motors, continuity through it. So somehow or other we've got dead duff motors. Now asked around and it was suggested that I would shove two rhinos in this on 2S to keep it at about 100 FPS. Which is old enough to actually go to uh, other events that will be 100 FPS. Now you can't really get those motors at short notice. The SUK has not got them in stock, you can no afford us to take them. So big thanks to uh, Spectre N7 who's actually this morning put some in the post to me first class next day delivery post so hopefully they should be turning up tomorrow and I'm going to be stripping this down and basically getting it ready now I didn't do a video when I did a demolisher but actually that was 2S with stock motors but I shoved in a cheap Chinese MOSFET board <laughs> and I'm going to do the same thing for this However, this time, instead of just running our stock motors, it'll be rhinos. So we're going to see how well that copes, or whether it doesn't, and the MOSFET board just blows up. I mean, that was the next step, that was the next idea, to see how well that MOSFET board would do with a little more. Because the board itself, I think it's aimed at like the Arduino market, designed to drive motors. So it's like, yeah, 5 volts, I don't know, 5 amps or something. The MOSFET itself, I think, was rated to like 15, which is okay for a pair of stock motors at stall, basically. Hooked okay with that, took it to a crazy nerf and ran back for a couple of games, and it was fine. Massively really underpowered, obviously. Fearless fire. I'm gonna to have to remove this thing to get oh you know what some sort of clip for the drum. Why a fearless fire? I'm going to my five-year-old daughter, it's less complicated than magazines. The switch looks like it has three wires. I need to figure out which two are important on that because they'll go to the MOS for board which i'll probably have to shove there this, this is the safety the lock i should say which means you can't fire when the jam doors open i'll get rid of that all three wires from the rev switch come to here so i'm going to cut all three off down there Ooh, yeah that's good i'm gonna to have to keep some of this because that's it does look like up against that. Probably mostly safe just to get rid of. Right. Comes down to a little circuit board here, which we don't need. Definitely no going back now, and I hope I can fit the battery in there. Yeah, I'll have to make a decision where to cut that. I may keep some of this, most of this back wall and actually as it seems to push down into this. If I kind of cut it just there, and if I actually open up some of this, it's a bit of a gap here mapped on the other side, so there's enough for wires to get through, so it's just a little bit on the back I'll need to keep. Take it out of the way. Somebody has glued this, this in. So I'll keep it in. Do you want to bend the spring? Because springs are useful and you never know when you need them. I am keeping the rupture over what? Because that makes sense. Because you really don't need to advance the drum. Unless you're willing to shoot. I'll keep these bits of the mechanism out because I'm going to need that to get access into absolutely everything else. I'm not keeping whatever this control board is. Could be more brutal cutting these things, but you never know when you need some trigger wire. Right, so that's the rev trigger, rev trigger switches. Luckily, I can get access to the pins on the back of the switch, so at some point, I'll just attack it with a multimeter, figure out which I need. The MOSFET is back here. I am going to need to extend these wires. All right, looks like we've got four keeping this in. The 
most phallic of all flywheel cages, it's to be found in a rebel. That's interesting. This thing just came out like that. And we've got two screws there. You'll notice there's no screws there. I suppose in theory it's got two clamping it there like that and sort of two clamping there. No, it actually clips on it. to do this. These are a set of MTB Rhino motors, normally rated for 3S, but going to run them on 2S because the vice is that plus standard stuff gets you about 100 FPS, so that's slower. I decided with my 3S stuff I'm using the XT60 connectors, but with my 2S stuff I'm going to use the Dean's connectors because that'll avoid screens up when I plug them in. Set of Dean's there, obviously I don't need one cycle on here, but I like to use them together when I'm soldering them because it spreads the heat and keeps them straight. Diode to go across the flywheels to keep them safe. This uh, 18WD wire lying around which should be enough to do it. My 2S battery, not sure if it's going to be enough for the wire in the motors but it's what I've got, I believe this one was going to work. Really enough, it just kind of fit in the uh, removable battery tray. So I'll probably just gut that and slot it in. This bit at the back is the screw port and that slots in there, battery door in. There's bits and pieces that sit into the, into the shell and sit on this lower full hole stock so that keeps that all nicely reinforced. So rather than just getting rid of doing part of it, I'm just going to cut the bits in the middle. Well, maybe actually keep the base. You'll see I'm going to need some holes sort of in the base to run the wires through. And that's the most risky part of this build is my cheap Chinese MOSFET board. And I've used that in the demolisher with a 2S battery and stock motors and that was fine. The line doesn't pull a bit more, so in theory this might not be enough. Because I think it's rated with 5 amps, but you can actually look up the MOSFET that's on here. That's rated to 10 amps. And again it's rated for 5 volts, but I think it's designed to go with like a 5 volt Arduino or something and drive motors. So we're using it a bit differently. But it's been fine in the other one. So hopefully it only draws silly ampage when it's installed for a split second and it can cope with that. If it doesn't cope with that, well, I actually put a proper MOSFET build into this thing. I've got the spare parts to hand, but this should make life easier and quicker because we've got screw port connectors that I can just drop them in. So I'm hoping I can fit it in here. Now, uh, how are they going to fit it that way? If I stand it on its side like that. And actually, that fits in there. Loose you can hear it rolling around. And there's a really big hole there to drop the power wires through. So I'm thinking I'll probably run battery cables through this hole in the back here to the MOSFET there. And the fearless fire, I figured out you've got the three wires that come off here. You've got a red and orange, which is what you need. Because when you push to make, those are two complete a switch. And the third brown one, you don't need. Probably reusing the wires that were on the existing motors to be run through under here. Because if I can just trim them there a bit. And here I can run those wires under there to the MOSFET. We'll need to run some wires forwards to the motors. Again, I'll probably remove some of this webbing here and run them under the battery tray. I just have both the skinny wires down here with a cover over them. Yeah, that actually two just about fills it. And I'm hoping where these bits here are quite narrow, it will actually pinch the cables a bit. Not enough to cause a problem, but enough just to hold them in place. This is the battery tray. Just a dink little battery, which I hope will be enough. I've taken out, actually I've peeled off the back the bit that had the sliding dividers. And I've taken out these bits here. I've left those bits there because it has a bit of rigidity. In it. I've taken out the entirety of this thing here and left this hole. Now the wires will come from the MOSFET board through here to a connector for this. For the flywheel cage, I did these bits with a chisel and I removed the back, at which point I found out that these fit in there sluggish. Okay, this is not ready to go in. And you've got these little red dots here, just the polarity. You want them facing in opposite directions. Put me my flyback diode in. You push them in, put the standard fearless fire flywheels. Want to make sure that your Nexi motors are popping out, make sure you don't lean on the tags when you're doing things. You're going to want your wheels to be level. Another good thing to check is do the top to catch on, just how far down you want to push them. So I'm going to say flywheel cage done. signal which works. When I was initially testing it, it had a 9-volt battery which was just about to the outsides. That was enough to trigger it which means you could actually have a separate 
triggering circuit, to a driving circuit if you wanted to pulse fire from one Arduino or something, which is what this actually what this is designed to do. But this instance we're bridging both sides of the MOSFET and it will not actually fit them to them. in here with a flyback diode, a bunch of wires, these for the battery, these are the thin ones on the switch, these ones for the battery and these ones go to the motors. Now I'm not entirely sure but I think individually those motors possibly draw more. All right we need to watch this to make sure the magic blue smoke doesn't come out okay? No. No. Right, that's a good start. There's the possibility when we put darts in it, it gets near to the stall. Yeah, it's a little blue one. Yeah, that's yours. Sounds mean, doesn't it? Here we have the completed Rebel Fearless Fire with a pair of, as you can really see them, we've got MTB Rhinos in there. And somewhere buried down here is our cheap Chinese MOSFET board. I'm screwed up now, but I've got a 2S850 25-50C WIPO in there. Probably just about see the wire there running from back to the front. And you can see part of my dodgy sold in there. Now this has survived with no load on it. So my only concern is when this starts kicking darts through, Obviously we're going to be pulling, or well, more still, we're going to be pulling more amps. Will it actually survive? So we have 16 darts, because that's what I had lying around. Let's go for it. Maybe I'm not getting on with this mechanism. It feels a bit heavy under the fingers. Nope, must just be me to actually fire all the darts. Well, that's that's 16 darts. And whatever on earth a pair of rhinos cut takes. And would you believe it? The cheap Chinese MOSFET board survived. I'm, I'm going to call that a success. Now, I'm actually off to Manchester Nerfers. I think it is fifth Manchester Nerf war in the park tomorrow. I'm going to take my five-year-old daughter. This is going to be her blaster. And we'll see how she gets on with it, shall we?